the Saints beat the Broncos in one of the ugliest and weirdest games I have ever seen in the NFL. The Saints won 31 to 3. And the Broncos quarterback situation for this game. Oh boy, it may be this might be one of the most bizarre NFL stories I've ever seen in my brief lifetime. Um so first of all, one of the Denver Broncos quarterbacks, Jeff Driscoll, tested positive for COVID. And then it came to light that apparently the Broncos quarterback room had not been properly following all of the NFL's COVID protocols. And so due to contact tracing and caution, on Saturday, the day before the game, the Broncos found out, hey, uh, all four of your quarterbacks cannot play in tomorrow's game. They all are too close to someone who had COVID. None of them can play. And you're like, wait, what? Hold on. The Broncos don't have a single quarterback for this game. And so Denver was put in this impossible situation saying, hey, the day before the game, you just got to figure it out. Find a way to make it happen. And people keep asking me, like, and, and asking the question just in general, why did the NFL not cancel this game? And there's a couple factors, I think, that led down to this happening. Uh, number one, the NFL desperately does not want to cancel games at any cost at all. Uh, for example, the Steelers-Ravens game has been moved so many times. Uh, it was on, it was supposed to take place last Thursday. It got moved to Monday, then Tuesday. Now it just got reported the game got moved to Wednesday. So six days after the game was supposed to take place, they're playing that game again and counting it as the same week. It's, it's just bizarre. I've never seen a Wednesday game in my entire life. Uh, the NFL desperately does not want to cancel games, especially if they can find a reason not to. They just do not want to do it. Uh, also... Because Denver broke protocol, the NFL's COVID protocols, it appears like the NFL wanted to use Denver as an example and kind of a warning to other teams, hey, follow our protocol or else you're going to get punished and find yourself in a really bad, impossible situation. That is why the Denver Broncos found themselves playing a game with not a single quarterback on the roster. It's kind of, it, well, it, is, it is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and this is why I believe the Patriots coach, Bill Belichick, has been really, really loose this year. Like, he, I think he's kind of let go of any desire to win a Super Bowl. He's clearly trying to win games. They're fighting hard. But I don't think Bill Belichick is going, we're going to win a Super Bowl this year. I think he's just kind of accepted that the NFL in 2020 is a mess. I mean, there's nothing that's dependable. If you're a coach, so many things are out of your control. Imagine a, a meeting that you would think, it's our quarterback room. They're going to take precaution. They're going to follow the rules and do things right. And, I mean, imagine the day before the Super Bowl that, you find out all four of your quarterbacks. Let's say the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. Every single quarterback on their roster, Patrick Mahomes all the way down. They're like, hey, it's Saturday. The game is on Sunday. Oh, yeah, by the way, every single one of your quarterbacks has COVID. They cannot play. The game is going on ahead anyway. It's a, the whole thing feels futile if you're an NFL coach trying to do the best you can. So a guy like Bill Belichick, who most coaches have to win, the pressure's on, they can't get away with just, trying to skate by. I mean, coaches are fighting. People are getting fired. Coaches are fighting hard to keep their jobs and stay alive in the NFL. But a coach like Bill Belichick, who's won six Super Bowls, doesn't care. He's like, I'm safe. I'm going to wait till COVID's gone, then turn the gears back and really try hard again. I, I, I just get this appearance and this feeling that Bill Belichick must realize it's, it's just futile. You can't, there's too many things out of your control. And the Denver Broncos got massively screwed here. But I also, I understand the NFL said, you can't break protocol. We're going to punish you for this. Now, the Broncos, again, they had no quarterback the day before the game. They're like, we don't know who to, what, to, what to do. And so the guy who kind of sort of played quarterback for Denver was a guy named Kendall Hinton. Uh, he's a practice squad wide receiver. He did actually play quarterback in college. He was the backup at Wake Forest. He's a very good athlete. Um, not a very good quarterback, although I don't think that's even fair because I, I just felt bad for Kendall Hinton. It, I'm gonna, I have a line later that kind of sums up how Kendall Hinton did, but the poor guy was put in an impossible situation. He's not even a quarterback anymore. You have one day notice. There's no way to really prepare. Like sometimes you look at a guy who they get their first opportunity in the NFL and you're like, well, the guy wasn't prepared for his moment. How could Kendall Hinton have possibly prepared for this moment? He had no idea. One day notice. You're not even playing quarterback anymore. You're a receiver now. It's a, I just feel bad for Kendall Hinton, honestly. Uh, he was one for nine passing at 13 yards uh, with two interceptions. His one completion was on a dinky little screen pass. It's just the poor guy. I just felt bad for him. 
Uh, his other eight passes to rank complete were literally like nowhere near his receivers. He just was throwing up prayers, hoping they would be completed. And uh, I mean, poor Kendall Hinton was set up to fail. I just feel bad for the guy. Now, it's also, I got to point out, it's pretty amazing that in spite of the situation, right? In spite of the fact that they, they had nobody who was going to play. I mean, they were like, I, I imagine Saturday night, they're like, well, c- what kind of makeshift playbook can we put together? Let's run plays we've never even talked about before. Have like a walkthrough and did whatever they could. And all things considered, it's pretty amazing that Kendall Hinton didn't have any like fumbled snaps or anything like that. They had a bad snap uh, to Philip Lindsay in the Wildcat formation. That's about it though. And so here's a, it's a fun line I'm going to say next. It's harsh, but it's also true. If you've ever wondered what it would be like if you threw a high school quarterback into an NFL game, it would likely be very, very similar to watching Kendall Hinton play quarterback on Sunday against New Orleans, where it just, it was hopeless. There was no chance. The guy looked scared for his life, running around, throwing the ball, just up in there, hoping people would catch it. Um, And, you know, in fact, it's kind of another crazy story out of this whole situation is that apparently the Broncos tried to add one of their quality control coaches, a guy named uh, Rob Calabrese, who played Calabrese or Calabrese. I've never heard of the guy. I guess he played quarterback at UCF a long time ago. He's 29 years old. I don't know that he ever actually, like, I think he was on a roster at Central Florida. I don't know if he actually played quarterback. Um, But the reason why the NFL didn't allow him to do it, which would have made sense. You have a coach who is reasonably healthy, who you would think is like, oh, maybe he's in playing. He, he, He knows, the benefit is he would know the offense very, very well. At the minimum, you wouldn't need to, like, create a new offense. Because of Kendall Hinton, they had a guy who didn't even know the offense. They had to, like, literally just throw something together. Um, the NFL blocked the use of Rob Calabrese because the NFL doesn't want you using your coaching staff as, like, a way to um, – as a reserve to hold players. Like, what if you're like, well, we don't want to have a backup quarterback on a roster, but we'll sign uh, – we'll sign – name any backup quarterback. We'll sign um, – Oh my gosh, literally, uh, is it Mitch Trubisky? I, I don't know why that's the first guy I think of. He's a backup quarterback in my mind to say, well, we don't want Mitch Trubisky on a roster because we can use that roster spot for a player who's going to play every week. But what we can do is make Mitchell Trubisky a coach. And then if somebody gets hurt, we can just elevate him from the coaching place to onto the active roster. The NFL said, we don't want that to happen at all. Uh, plus, you also need to have a player for five days uh, between signing them before they can play. Um, it was all strange. I mean, they literally, the Broncos tried to sign a coach to play quarterback. It's kind of, it's crazy. It's funny. It's just a bizarre situation. Now, for most of the game, uh, Denver ran the Wildcat offense. That's, they literally had a direct snap to the running back, ran like zone reads and a lot of just quarterback counter and stuff like that. Uh, you know, they had Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay playing the quote, Wildcat quarterback position. Uh, they did not throw the ball at all. The only the only person who threw the ball for the Broncos was um, Kendall Hinton. And it reminded me how, honestly, how awful the Wildcat offense is to watch. It's not very, it's very limited. It's easy to defend because you just load the box and then pray that they don't do like a, a fake run, pop pass kind of thing. Uh, Denver didn't do anything like that. There's nothing imagined. I just, it was weird and bad and boring and awful. And Denver's offense was just terrible, not fun to watch. Um, I mean, actually, it's kind of amazing that despite the circumstance, it's crazy Denver even got a field goal. They got three points. Denver only got a field goal because Taysom Hill, the Saints quarterback, threw an interception, gave them really good field position. They went three and out, but they started the drive in field goal range, so they got a field goal, got three points. That's why Denver lost 31-3 to instead of 31-0. to um, Now, let's talk about the Saints and Taysom Hill because... I've seen enough. I've seen enough of Taysom Hill to know that Taysom Hill is not the long-term answer at quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. The Saints need a better quarterback to be their long-term franchise quarterback. The answer is not Taysom Hill. He's got an average arm, which if you're flawless with attention to detail, you can get away with having an average arm. Taysom Hill is not flawless. He actually is very, in my opinion, not great with the small attention to detail where he held onto the ball too long. He didn't see people open. He didn't find his checkdowns. He had no idea what was happening with the play clock. Uh, he had two um, delay again penalties. One was really bad. He literally just had no idea that the play clock had turned to zero. They didn't call it till like eight seconds after it hit zero because just no. It was just it was bizarre and weird. Um, and so Taysom Hill, I don't want to come down too hard on him. Like 
people are going to hear me say he's not the long-term answer and think I hate Taysom Hill or he's bad or he's not very good. I want to be very, very clear here. Taysom Hill is fine. He's fine. He's a backup. He's a very solid backup quarterback. In fact, if he was my backup quarterback, I'd feel very good about that. He clearly works hard. He knows the system very, very well. And even I would even go as far as to say that if, if Drew Brees were tired and the Saints needed a year to kind of bridge the gap to get through a year, he could be a good duct tape, bridge the gap quarterback for a year if need be, right? Taysom Hill is not terrible, nothing like that. He's very, very solid. He's very, very fine. But he's also not good enough to be your long-term franchise quarterback. I'm not building my offense and my franchise around Taysom Hill. No way. And I, you know, I'll wait till his run starting games is over. But at some point, I'll make a video, like a film analysis video, breaking down, showing you examples of mistake and mistake and this and that. I'll do a film analysis of why Taysom Hill is not the long-term answer a quarterback. But point blank, he's not. I mean, just, well, I'll show you later, but he's not. Uh, he's also 30 years old, and I'll be totally honest. I mean, I Taysom Hill is a slightly better version of Tim Tebow. Remember Tim Tebow a couple years ago? Taysom Hill has a slightly better arm. Uh, he's slightly better throwing the ball. He's a slightly better athlete. He, he's certainly quicker and more twitchy. Um, but the scheme, the play calling, the style, Taysom Hill is very, very similar to Tim Tebow. I mean, it, it just he just is. Uh, Taysom Hill had more carries than completions, meaning that Taysom Hill ran the ball 10 times. He only had 10 completed passes. That's kind of crazy. Like, he had 10, ca- 10 throws that were caught by a receiver. He also ran the ball 10 times. Sorry, he had nine, nine completed passes. He was 9 for 16 passing with 78 yards passing and an interception. And he ran the ball 10 times for 44 yards and two touchdowns. Again, he had more carries than completions. That's unbelievable. That's, I just... That's, He's not a typical quarterback. He's he's a better version of Tim Tebow, in my opinion. And, uh, and also, I mean, some of that is because the Saints were up by so much. Uh, some of that was mercy. They're like, we don't need to throw the ball very much because we, we're running the ball dominated with, with a dominating fashion. Latavius Murray had a great game. The Broncos didn't want to be there. I mean, you could, part of that is because I'm not trying to just skew the, the stats to make it sound bad. Part of why Taysom Hill ran the ball so much and didn't throw very much is because the Saints were winning by so much, they didn't need him to do very much, and they didn't ask him to do very much. Now, I will say, to the credit of Taysom Hill, I try to give praise whenever I can. He had a really good throw down the left sideline, a back shoulder throw to Michael Thomas. Uh, good ball. I mean, it's just a, it's a good throw. I think it's the best throw I've seen him make in his entire NFL career. I went, ah, that's a nice ball. But I've seen enough from Taysom Hill. Um, he's He's solid. He's not bad. He runs the offense very, very well. If Taysom Hill is my backup quarterback, I feel very confident. Like, hey, he can run the offense. He can win a couple games. I, I li- I, don't get me wrong. I like Taysom Hill, but I would not build my franchise around him. Taysom Hill is not the long-term answer at quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. 